So a common question that beginners have is when are you ready to interview for that first job? So today I want to talk about some signs that you're not ready. And before we get started, I do want to set just a preface that I'm going to assume that you are technically competent at a programming language in this video. And if you're not, let me invite you to check out skillfoundry.io where we have over 700 hours of learner content that takes people from zero to being ready to interview for that first job. Now let's get started. So the first sign that you're not ready to interview is that you're unable to explain fundamental coding concepts using real examples. So let's talk about that. Let's say inheritance comes up in your interview. If all you're able to do is give the textbook definition of inheritance and then use the trope example of like vehicle, car, truck, or shape, circle, square, you're not ready for that part of the interview. Ideally, when an interviewer asks you about a technical concept, you're able to respond not only with the definition, but also with an example from your portfolio projects or your practices that shows that you deeply understand how to use that concept in a real application. And it goes beyond just general coding concepts. I see this all the time when I interview people for web development jobs. They might understand a framework like React, but they have no idea how the internet actually works or how requests and responses are processed. What's the difference between session and cookie and query strings? And why would you use one over the other? There is a lot of depth to a lot of technical concepts. And even as a beginner, you should have a decent idea of the difference between things, how to compare and contrast, and be able to bring examples from your portfolio project work to bear so you can show the interview that you know more than just the surface level textbook definition. Now, the next sign that you're not ready for that first interview is that you lack a substantial portfolio project. And when I say substantial, what I mean is it's not a to-do app. It's not one of those toy applications that any of the frameworks use to demonstrate how they work. I'm talking about a real application that goes from front end to back end and demonstrates solving real problems problems and multiple problems. So here's some examples of some projects we work on at Skill Foundry and projects I've seen in the past. You could do something like a help desk ticketing system where you manage users and agents and you manage all the authorization and the roles and the back and forth of being able to open, process, reassign, and close tickets. You could have something like a school application where you can enroll students and set up classes, have assignments and grade books, and have reports about the grades and the progresses and assign teachers. There's so many different applications like that that you see in the real world that you can use to build and explore concepts like security, like reporting, like data validation on forms. If you build one or more of these portfolio projects, you'll have a lot easier time in that previous section I just mentioned, having real examples for technical concepts. And then what's great about it is during the interview, you can draw the interviewer in and it's kind of like a Jedi mind trick where you can talk about your portfolio projects and the lessons you learned and the architecture and design decisions you made and have open conversations about things you would improve or do differently based on what you learned. And if you start talking about that and you get the interviewer engaged with you, you're much less likely to have the interviewer start steering you into areas where you're less comfortable because they really want to know what you know, how you learn, how you make those decisions. And if you just sit there like a lump and let them just drag that out of you, it's much more likely they're going to take you to a place where you're not comfortable. Now, the next sign that you're not ready for that first coding interview is that you lack comfort in presenting or coding in front of others. Because at some point during the technical interview, you're probably going to be asked to solve a problem either on a computer using an IDE or an online tool, or you might be asked to go to the whiteboard or just have a discussion with the interviewer about how you would approach a problem and how you solve things. You need to be very comfortable and natural at answering those questions. And even though you're nervous, 
you're gonna need to be able to think rationally in the moment. Now, this is something that's a skill. It's something that's acquired. It's not something that even introverts, extroverts, it doesn't matter. Everybody has to practice this skill. So how do you do that? Well, you can practice with your peers so you can give each other mock interviews. And you can go to meetup groups and dev events where they're always looking for people to present things. And you can ask them to let you practice or talk to a mentor at one of these groups and see if they'll give you a mock interview. People are often generally generous with their time if you ask. Buy them a cup of coffee. Say, hey, I want to go to Starbucks. We'll sit down. I'll buy you a nice coffee and you just rapid fire some interview questions at me and rate me on how I answer. These are all things you can do. And if you're a Skill Foundry member, you can get mock interviews from experienced professionals like myself. It's very important to just find somebody to practice with and do that practice because this part of the interview is a skill. And a few other points I want to make about this part of the interview. First, be very careful when you're solving technical problems that you don't rush into coding. Make sure that you really understand that problem and you ask clarifying questions. Because there are some interviewers out there, and I think these people are jerks, but it is the reality of the situation, where they will put traps in their problems and they're looking for you to identify edge cases or things that are wrong with the specification. So really take the time to think and discuss the problem before you jump into the code. Another piece of advice is that this is a skill that you should start practicing before you go for your dream job. I know that some beginners, you wanna target Google or Microsoft or some big name company. They should not be the first company that you target. You should run the circuit and have a couple technical interviews with companies that you're less excited about to get that practice so that when you get the interview for the company you really wanna work for, you are practiced up and more confident. Another sign that you're not ready for that first interview is that you're not comfortable using the debugger. And think about this as an entry level programmer. When you get on the job, one of the first things you're going to need to do is explore the code base. And one of the first tasks they're going to give you are usually things that are simpler bugs or simple features, break fixes, things like that. And if you're not comfortable using the debugger, you're going to have a lot of trouble in an enterprise code base figuring out where everything is and what exactly you need to touch to complete your tasks. And this will show up in the interview. I know a lot of interviewers that will give you broken code and they will ask you to fix it during the interview. And they want you to use the debugger. They are begging you to use the debugger in their minds. But what you often see with people that are confident with the debugger is they'll just start flailing at the code and start changing things and just running the app, change it, run it. And they never use the debugger. And that is a common failure point in technical interviews that you should avoid. So make sure when you're learning to code that when you have problems, you pull out the debugger and you approach these things using a logical scientific method. And isolate the changes. And if you're good at doing that, you will be ready to impress as an entry level person in an interview. And now I want to talk about something non-technical that stops a lot of beginners in the interview process. And that's the behavioral questions that you need to prepare for. So at some point during the interview, whether it's an HR person, whether it's the technical interviewer, they are going to be looking for your ability to be collaborative and coachable because those are the two most important things in the soft skills that we're looking for for junior developers because we're going to have to spend a lot of time training you. You're not going to jump in and just start writing code and producing day one. We're going to have to bring you up to that point. So let's talk about what that means. Coachability. Are you eager to learn? Are you accepting of new ideas? Be ready to talk about how you've learned things in the past. Be ready to talk about examples of places where you've had a preconception and you've changed your mind based on data. Also on the collaboration, be ready to talk about team projects and interactions that you've had in the past. And if you are a solo learner, that's not the end of the road. You can talk about other places where you've collaborated in previous jobs. Maybe you've gone to meetup groups. Maybe you've done hackathons. Maybe you volunteer at some organizations. There's always some place where you've had to collaborate with people. I even had a candidate once talk to me about how they were 
you know, like a moderator in their Warcraft guild and how they used to schedule events and work with people and, and help negotiate who got what items and things like that. And I ended up hiring that person because they had a really good idea of how to work with people that had different goals and get them all moving in the same direction. So, I mean, video games is a good example. Team-based games, team-based sports. Those are all examples that you can use in these interviews. But again, at the end of the day, we want to feel comfortable that we're going to be able to teach you things and you're going to be collaborative with the team. Now, the good news is if you've learned to code, you understand what it is to develop a skill. And interviewing is a skill. You need to go through the same process of practicing, gathering feedback, shoring up your weaknesses. And as an extra tip in your interview situation, it's not the end of the world if you make a mistake or you don't know something. When that happens, just cop to it, admit to it, move on. Because as an interviewer, what we're looking for when that happens, when we trip you up, is whether you're going to BS or lie to us or try to not admit that you have a weakness when it's obvious that you do. Those things are big red flags for interviewers. You want to come in, remember what I said about collaboration and humility and the ability to learn. Those things are more important. And some interviewers, including me, when we're giving you technical questions, we're looking for your limits. So when you start answering things right, I'll keep going until you miss something because I want to figure out where your boundaries are. So missing a question or not knowing something is not a bad thing. It should happen at some point in an entry level interview. So again, don't panic, admit that you don't know. And if you really want bonus points later on, ask them clarifying questions where you can learn that thing that you missed, because that's usually really impressive to an interviewer. If you ask for that feedback or you ask for that guidance, because it shows that you want to learn and improve. And if you do all these things and you practice interviewing and you have your technical skills in order, at that point, getting hired is just a numbers game. Happy coding.